Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another episode of Dollar a Day Raid. Uh, today's day 15. We're going to cover where you should be farming in campaign. Uh, we've talked about this loosely in a lot of other videos, but I thought we'd just run through it, show you where we're farming, talk about why we're farming there. Uh, and yeah, just going through that. As always, guys, a thumbs up does help out tremendously, brightens my day. Uh, do subscribe if you enjoy Raid Shadow Legends. We are uh, going to be cracking through this, uh, hopefully day by day. Um, where to farm? Now, I think I think there's a few interesting points about farming. Um, I mean, the simple answer is you obviously just want to get as much XP as possible. Uh, another thing to balance is how much silver you want to get. Uh, because uh, XP and silver are a bit of a trade-off when farming the campaign. Uh, the next consideration is gear. Do you want specific gear pieces that you can get from some of these stages, like speed, like lifestyle? Uh, you know, maybe resist, uh, maybe destroy. Then after that, you're thinking about champions. You know, are the champions that I want to pick up? Um, so yeah, so let's just start at the start. Now, at normal, uh, you're really not getting much XP. Uh, it's considerably by far the worst obviously it's pretty easy to get through the campaign on normal you should have this beat probably fairly early on um now you only get one to three star gear three star gear in my opinion is not worth investing in at all um so you know i don't think we're getting anything from that your chances of getting heroes are actually less on the lower campaign stages you're going to find you're going to get uh, more mystery shards um, and as you go up to hard the chances uh, go up and then as you go to brutal um, they go up again so really if you're looking for characters you want to be doing brutal now hard you do start to get four star gear so you know if you just about get to i don't know the catacombs and you're doing hard we will be getting four star defense gear uh four star for the gloves chest and boots i think is okay um, but again, ideally, your goal really is to get to brutal ASAP. So you, you want to just basically get through the hard campaign um, by any means necessary. You know, if you have to have uh, four champs that are gaining no XP just to beat the stages, that's fine. Uh, ideally, you want to get to brutal. Now, everything I'm going to say about brutal does apply to hard, um, but brutal is where we want to be. Now, it doesn't matter if you can only beat. You know, like at Brutal at the moment, uh, we haven't finished. You know, we've got up to here and my level 50 Tyrell just can't quite get this done on his own. Uh, the reason for that really is because he's got a resistance chest uh, because this is just the best chest plate I've got. I have got a couple of candidates for him, uh, some lifesteal stuff that we could do and then we're free to maybe get him onto a five star shield which would obviously would be nice. So I will regear this dude, uh, or maybe five star helmet, because uh, we don't really like the attack percent. But we're not that far off. Uh, so you can actually farm pretty much most of Brutal Campaign with a five star level 50 hero. Uh, and that's basically the first point. You will hear all the time that you need to get a six star. You need a 60. Get your first character to 60 ASAP. Build a campaign farmer. Level up your starting champions so they can farm a brutal campaign for you. Um, now, realistically, it's only the last few stages uh, that you need a 64. And even I do think we may well be able to, you know, if we ascended Tyrell up, if we boosted his gear up a little bit, he probably could do 12 threes of 50. Um, you know, that potentially is a video in the future. Um, but I'll tell you what he can do really comfortably is the dreadlands uh, and the xp loss between here and the end is probably only about 20 percent and it takes so long to build one champion to 60 uh, and then you're absolutely knackered because you don't have you don't have a roster to do uh, higher level dragon you don't have a clan boss team you don't have multiple teams for 3v3 arena you're going to find it hard to progress in fire knight spider uh, faction wars much better i think uh, to spread it wide so first point you don't need a level 60 to farm brutal campaign a level 50 is fine um now the considerations for xp uh, just in general you get the most xp on stage six of any level this is the one that will give you the most xp uh, and you're going to win yourself a pair of boots if you beat it 
the one that gives the most silver is stage three. So the shield, they tend to sell for more. Um, so, it, you know, generally they're the two stages. Prioritize silver stage three, prioritize XP stage six. But there are a couple of things to bear in mind. Uh, so one, let's say we'll, go, we'll have a look at speed sets from the Palace of Arabia. This is a really easy stage for a magic champion to beat because there are a lot of spirit and a lot of magic champs. But in addition to this, there's two things to bear in mind. One, weapons, boots, shields always roll with the same flat stat at the top. So it's always attack, always HP, always defense. So when you're running dragon, it's much more likely you're going to find yourself a nice shield, a nice helmet, and a nice weapon because there's no bad main stat but gloves chest boots can all roll flat defense flat hp flat attack and generally speaking for boots you only really want speed boots to start off with later game you might want hp defense and attack for a nuker but generally at the moment you just want speed so you need to be thinking when you're doing these stages do i want gloves do I want chest plates? Do I want boots? Am I short of any of these? Because if you know, like if I have a look at my accounts just out of interest uh, and I can sort of have a little look and sh see where it is I should be farming. Uh, so if we go to boots, uh, we've, I know I've got three pairs of speed boots waiting to go. All only four star, which is a bummer, but they are ready to be leveled up. Okay, so let's check chest. So we'll do HP, uh, chest, none, ready to go. Defense percent three. Okay, so I'm probably a little light on chest plates. Uh, if I look at gloves, generally crit rate is what you want. We've got three here without uh, being leveled. We've got a few crit damage options. Okay, HP percent. Yeah, we've got one. Defense percent. We've got a couple. Uh, attack percent. You're not normally going to use, but we do still have a couple. So I'm okay for gloves. So I don't really need any gloves at the moment. Uh, so I would probably be looking to farm boots or farm chest plates as things stand, simply because they're, you know, the chest plates in particular, defense, HP, uh, you know, that's kind of what we want. Um, now, another thing as well, actually, whilst we're here, is farming the campaign like this, uh, concentrating on the stage with the boots, means that you can get a shit ton of speed boots. Uh, so we've got one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We've got sixteen champs uh, equipped with speed boots, and I've got another three spare. Um, very important to get these because uh, they do offer such a huge benefit. So that's uh, another consideration. Uh, another thing to think about is the affinities. Affinities matter so much in this game. Uh, by way of example, stage eight. The Valdemar Strait. Lifesteal gear is very powerful early on. You heal by 30% of the damage dealt. If you've got any kind of champion that's putting out damage for you, this is just the best gear to have. Uh, particularly if you've got access to counter attack accessories or any form of counter attack on a champion or in your roster at all, uh, it is very, very handy. But you'll note this is absolutely full of force affinity enemies. They will wreck. Uh, a blue hero a magic hero even this stage here Aethar hits like a truck um, and my level 50 Tyrell at the moment can't quite get this done on his own occasionally he'll do it some of the time he won't so we have to bear in mind do we want to be doing this stage with him or not now again this is another reason why it's nice to push your roster wider because you will then have potential options so the way XP works for campaign farming It'll give you a set amount of XP for doing each level and it'll divide it by the number of champions. So here it divides it by four. Tyrell can't get any because he's maxed. So therefore we're only getting three quarters of the max XP for the Crimson Slayer, for the Jizzo and for the Rock Breaker. If we took out those two units, all well, the XP would be divided between these two characters. So we're now losing 50% XP because Tyrell's taking 50, Rock Breaker's taking 50. So if we could get through the stage with something like this, uh, and if we just pick another champ, you know, if we could do it like this with these four champs, we'd be getting 100% of the XP. Uh, so we do need to bear that in mind as well. Now, even though that this is an easier level than say nine, uh, actually Tyrell can do this one on his own because the affinity 
is good for him. It's spirit, it's magic. Uh, so he can do these stages fine on his own, but he can't do um, stage eight. So that's another thing to think about. Whenever possible, you don't want to be mugging yourself off for that lack of 25% XP. So a good strategy to try and do as you're building up multiple units on your account is to level them up in maybe in twos and then take some food. So often I'll run a campaign stage uh, and it may well be something like, let's say I'm going to do Ugo as my next uh, my next champ that we're going to level up. So I might say, well, Frozen Banshee can still get XP. We're going to level Ugo as well. Uh, you know, once we've put the chickens in and got her up to five star rank one. And then maybe we're not going to be able to get through that with just those two. So we'll chuck in Jizzo and then we'll chuck in a food. We'll run it. We'll see whether we can beat it and we'll keep a little bit of an eye on it. And if it does look like, you know, it's dicey, then maybe we will have to go back on Tyrell and just sacrifice at 25% HP, oh sorry, XP. But that's something you need to bear in mind, you know, whenever you can get away with not taking a fully leveled champ, uh, you need to do it. Again, that's something I think is definitely underrated in this game. People will say, go to 12-3, put your best champion in, take three food, uh, and get the max XP. That's fine. Um, but if you've got a champion who's DPS, you're going to be building multiple, multiple champions in this game. It makes far more sense to me to take two through at once that you're leveling so they can support each other, blast through it, and provided you're not losing the level, uh, you're going to be getting more XP. Um, now, the other reason to farm the campaign, uh, other than XP, silver, uh, and the gear, obviously the gear sets that are important are probably speed for 12% extra speed per two pieces. Um, you know, very important stage. The other one uh, is the Valdemir straight for the lifesteal. Another thing actually to bear in mind that I should have mentioned earlier is on stage seven, the boss stage, you can get gear that has got two substats unlocked. So you can get, um, you know, better gear. You have a chance to drop better gear at the boss, but it tends to cost more energy. So again, that's something you need to bear in mind. So unless you just want the best speed gear and you're not bothered what it drops, then go do the boss. Generally speaking, you, I, I still think it's probably more better value to do individually gloves, chest and boots because as you do dragon, as we say, you will find those. Um, the other thing, other than gear, is champions. Now, you need to have a look at your roster and decide who the champions are you are, rare-wise. Uh, so if we do by rarity, which one of these ones are we going to use? Well, we know we're going to use Frozen Banshee, Undead Horde. She's going to be our poisoner for clan boss. So we need to get Undead Horde from the campaign. You can't get any dwarves, you can't get any shadowkin, but each stage will tell you who you can get. Uh, now, a stage that has only got one three star is is probably easier because you're not kind of like having to mix and match. But I know that I can come back here, farm the catacombs of Narbuk. Pretty bad XP compared to the later stages, but I can get multiple copies of Sorceress. She can then go into our guardian ring go into our faction guardians and then we can start to uh, build up in here uh, frozen banshees hp attack accuracy resistance defense and speed so again that's something for me to do on my list something like skinwalkers again is quite good Greybeard's a good champion uh, to get. We've, we've covered the champs that we want to be building out, um, you know, to 40 to 50 before in previous videos. But farming the campaign to get multiple copies of Greybeard, not only uh, for the faction Guardian Crypt, but also to book him out uh, is good. Same for Templar, who is, it, who is a champ that I like as well from the Valdemir Strait Lifesteal set place. Um, this is pretty good as well. He's got a really good kit. Barbarians, I really like Berserker, I really like more War Maiden, both of those are very useful. Um, again, you know, this is the kind of thing you need to be thinking about. So it's not just a question of doing the highest, it's not just a question of using your best units. You need to be thinking like what blend of XP, silver, gear pieces, units do I want to be getting out of this? Um, and always try and level as many many units as you can. Now, obviously, there's nothing to stop you taking food in other things, like dungeons. There's an argument 
uh, to be running a little bit lower than your max stage with a bit of food in, um, just so that you're always getting a little bit of XP. And obviously, I guess the final point uh, is always when you can try and prioritize the campaign when you've got an XP boost active. Um, you get quite a lot of these at the start, particularly if you press progress through the game quickly. Uh, so we're going to be doing mostly campaign farming for the next two weeks, just to build out as many champs as we can. Um, but yeah, they're the tips. Try not to waste the XP. Try and get it through as best as possible. Balance it out with the units you need. Balance it out with the silver that you want. Uh, and hopefully speaking, that has covered just some basic points and a little bit uh, you know, of tips and tricks uh, as to how to level um, just to get as many units built as you can. Because honestly as well, the game is a lot more fun. The more, the more units you have, the more champs, the more you can get in and do like 11 stars on Ogren tribes, you know, within a few days, um, you know, and some of these with zeros, you know, not great. You can get, you can get some decent rewards out of this faction wars. It does start to ramp up uh, pretty quickly up into epic books, void shards, chickens as well. Chickens are just so good. But yeah, that's the guide guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be back with some more videos soon. Take it easy. Peace.